Hi chemists, this video is going to be on acid and base strength. Now as a bit of a bonus, I've had some feedback that I do tend to make a lot of pausing noises all the time, so ums and ahs. So I'm really going to try in this video to not do that. So your challenge, in addition to learning this chemistry content, is to count the ums and ahs that I make, apart from those ones, and let me know how many we've got by the end of the video. So we're going to get into acid and base strength. Experiments show that different acid solutions of the same concentration do not have the same pH. Now remember the pH scale is from 0 to 14, 7 being neutral, less than 7 is acidic, greater than 7 is basic. Now it's a log 10 scale, so what that means is a substance that has a pH of 2 is 10 times more acidic than a substance that has a pH of 3. A lot of people tend to get mixed up with concentration and the strength of an acid or a base. So they might think that if an acid is strong, then that solution is a concentrated one. Now that's not necessarily correct. They're a little bit different. When we're talking about strength of acids or bases, we'll start with acids because they're a bit more common. Some acids donate a proton more readily than others. In the previous video on Lowry Bronsted acids and bases, we discussed oh, Bronsted Lowry. I mix them up. We discussed that acids are proton donors and bases are proton acceptors. The strength of an acid is defined by how readily it donates that proton. Oh, and I just explained that here. So the Bronsted Lowry theory is saying that the strength of an acid it's a, is its ability to donate hydrogen ions. Um, the, oh, there's one. Damn. The strength of a base is a measure of the substance's ability to accept hydrogen ions from an acid. So the more readily it accepts those protons, the stronger a base it is. We'll start off with some strong acid examples. Common ones that we see quite often include HCl, H2SO4 and HNO3. Now you guys all know the names of those acids, don't you? If you don't, that's okay. I'll tell you right now. HCl is generally hydrochloric acid or hydrogen chloride. This one is sulfuric acid and this one is nitric acid. They're all covalent molecular compounds and they're all polar covalent molecular compounds. And because of that, they're going to ionize completely in water. Remember, ionizing means that they're going to form charged products in water. So you're going to have positive and negative ions. We'll just go straight into it. Here are the three ionization reactions when you mix each of these strong acids with water. So water is going to act as the base. So all of the acids will donate a proton and you've got all of the resultant uh, conjugate bases on the right hand side. So we've got chloride forming from HCl, we've got HSO4- minus, so a hydrogen sulfate ion forming from sulfuric acid, and we've got a nitrate ion forming from uh, nitric acid. There's another one. I think it's two if you can. And we've also got um, hydrogen. <laughs> we've got we've got hydronium ions forming. It's really hard. You should try it. Okay, so the strength of those acids means those protons are going to be readily donated and all of these reactions are going to form majority charge products. So for this reaction, the majority of species in the solution are going to be this. They're going to be charged. Same with this, same with this. Pretty much 100% of all particles are going to form the charged versions. Weak acids would be ones that donate protons still, but not as readily. So an example of this is vinegar, which is a solution of ethanoic acid. Now ethanoic acid is CH3COOH, which I'll show you in a second, and it can also be referred to as acetic acid. So ethanoic and acetic are the exact same thing. Pure ethanoic acid is a polar covalent molecular compound that ionizes in water to produce hydrogen ions and acetate ions or you can refer to those as ethanoate ions. So this is the equation here. Now this looks a little bit different for a few reasons. First of all, if you haven't seen this one, it does look a bit scary, 
um, but don't be too stressed out. CH3CAAH is a very common weak acid and we've got water acting as a base. Now this here, we've got essentially two reactions going on. You can refer to this as maybe an equilibrium arrow or you've got a forwards reaction occurring and a backwards reaction occurring. So what we're saying is the reactants are forming products but at the same time the products are forming reactants as well. So there's two reactions going on. Which reaction do you think is happening more readily? Now the bottom arrow is bigger so that would indicate that the backwards reaction is actually happening more frequently than the forwards reaction. And that's because ethanoic acid or acetic acid is a weak acid. So in a one molar solution of ethanoic acid, so that's a concentration, only a small proportion, less than 1% of the ethanoic acid molecules are ionized. So if you've got this reaction here, about 1% of all particles are going to be the charged or the ionized versions and 99 plus percent are going to be this. Okay, So it doesn't give off that proton very readily at all. It does a little bit but not very much and that's the definition of a weak acid. Here we've got an example of a strong acid. So this is just a diagrammatic representation. We've got a beaker and we've got obviously a solution. Now what have we got in here? We've got H2O, we've got, so everything's dissolved in these water molecules. We've got hydronium particles in green. I'm kind of colorblind, so we'll go with green. Not really, but a little bit. It is a bit hard to see. And we've got chloride ions here. Okay, So the majority of this is charged species because this is a strong acid. So you've got lots of charged particles there. There's nothing uncharged. All of the HCl that was put in this beaker has ionized to become Cl- and H3O+. There are no examples of HCl in here. It's all charged. So that's a strong acid. Here we've got a weaker acid. So our um, acetate. It's three, I think. Maybe four. So here we've got our acetic acid, CH3COOH. These are the purple particles. Now when they ionize, they'll form the acetate ion, which is in pink, and the hydronium ion in green. So you can see the majority of the acetic acid particles have not ionized, but some of them do. Okay, And the fact that some of them do is why it's a weak acid. We'll have a look at some strong bases now. So it's a similar concept, okay? A strong base is one that will accept protons readily. The ionic compound sodium oxide, the ionic compound sodium oxide, Na2O, dissociates in water, which releases sodium ions and oxide ions. The oxide ions react completely with water, accepting a proton to form hydroxide ions. So this is a bit more complicated example. So the Na2O is just the, the solute, and that is basically our way to get oxide ions. So the sodium ions would be spectator ions in this case. They're not involved in the reaction. So these oxide ions are going to react with water. The oxide ions are a base, so they're going to accept a proton to form hydroxide. And the water is going to donate a proton to form hydroxide again. So this is a, a reaction where we're producing multiple hydroxide ions. So you could represent that as 2OH as well. Now the oxide ion is an example of a strong base. Strong bases will accept protons easily. So all of these are going to accept protons to form these. So the majority, so 99% to 100% of species in solution are going to be the hydroxide ions. Now sometimes you might see that sodium hydroxide is referred to as a strong base, but this is a tiny bit incorrect. Sodium hydroxide is an ionic compound and it's a source of the strong base, which is the hydroxide ion. So hydroxide ions are strong bases, not sodium hydroxide. Just a little technicality there. So weak bases will be those that accept protons not as readily. An example of this is ammonia. So here's our ammonia. It's a base because it's accepting a proton to form NH4+. 
water is the acid because it's donating a proton and it's going to the conjugate base is going to be hydroxide. Now again, we've got this equilibrium arrow indicating that you've got a forwards and a backwards reaction. The bottom is larger than the top, which indicates that the backwards reaction is happening more frequently than the forwards reaction. So the majority of species in this reaction are going to be like this, and a small proportion are going to be charged. Therefore, it's a weak base in water. The next section is on polyprotic acids. So some acids are actually capable of donating more than one proton, and they're said to be polyprotic. The number of hydrogen ions an acid can donate depends on the structure of the acid. So there's a lot of writing on this slide, sorry about that. Monoprotic acids can donate only one proton, and these include HCl, because it only has one hydrogen, hydrofluoric acid, which is HF, nitric acid, again only one hydrogen, and ethanoic acid. Now this one's a bit unique, it's got more than one hydrogen, but it only donates one, okay, and we'll explain that in a minute. Diprotic acids, as you might guess, so di meaning two, will donate do will donate two protons. Examples of that are H2SO4 and H2CO3. They're going to donate two protons. And the last section is triprotic acids. They can donate three protons. Examples of these are phosphoric acid and boric acid. So we'll go through the ionization of um, phosphoric acid. Sorry, there should be a P there. It can ionize in stages. Okay, now every time we have an ionization occurring, it occurs in stages. So it doesn't go from this all the way to this in one in the blink of an eye. It has to do the first stage and then the second stage and then the third stage. I've chosen a triprotic acid to look at because this is the hardest one. So you start off with H3PO4. This will donate one proton to water to form H2PO4 minus. So you can see you lose one hydrogen and you gain a negative charge. That's the common pattern that you can follow. And you've also got hydronium forming. The second stage involves this ion here, H2PO4 minus, and that is part of the second stage. It reacts with a second water molecule, and we've got a reaction which gives us HPO4 2 minus. So again, dropping one H and gaining a negative charge and hydronium. And the last stage is the HPO4 2 minus ion with another water molecule forming phosphate and hydronium. Now, what do these equilibrium arrows mean? That means partial ionization. So is this a strong acid or a weak acid? The answer is a weak acid. If it was a strong acid, it would be a full arrow. As we go from stage one to stage three, you can see that the arrow progressively changes. The top section is bigger, smaller, smaller. So that indicates that there's less and less of these species forming. So in a solution of phosphoric acid and water, you'd have a little bit a few of these, fewer of these, and even fewer of these. Ethanoic acid is the example that I wanted to discuss because it has more than one hydrogen, but it only donates one of them. It's only a monoprotic acid. So it's hard to judge you know, what's monoprotic, what's diprotic, what's triprotic. Unfortunately, it's just one of those things that we do have to remember. And this one is a good example, and it's a very good exam question. Look at my eye. Look at this. Okay. Um, I think we get that. Oh, fourth arm. Depth. Fifth arm. Ah, oh. um, oh, six. Ethanoic acid. We've got four hydrogens, but it only donates one proton. So the proton that it donates, here's our ethanoic acid, CH, CH3, C double O H. The reason why this hydrogen here is the only one that's donated is because it's a highly acidic proton. 
The acidity of the proton is determined by how polar the bond is. Because OH is a very polar bond, oxygen is much more electronegative than hydrogen. So usually the proton that's donated is that of a very polar bond. So that is the reason why only this proton is donated. These ones are not because these bonds are considered non-polar. C and H have very equal electronegativities. So these ones will not actually be donated. The last slide I'll leave you on is to do with strength versus concentration. So we've got four examples of beakers here and we've got some differences about them. Now the concentration of ions in solution depends on the concentration and the strength of an acid. Here we have a solution of weak concentrated ethanoic acid. Concentrated because there's lots of acid particles, but weak because it's ethanoic acid, okay, which is acetic acid. And that one is considered a weak acid because it doesn't donate its proton very readily. You can see there's differences here. We've got the acid and we've got the conjugate base, which is the one that's been ionized. So that a lot of them are not ionized. Here we've got a weak dilute acid. Dilute because there's not many acid particles in solution compared to this one. And it's weak because again, it's ethanoic acid, doesn't ionize readily. Here we've got strong concentrated hydrochloric acid. Strong because it's hydrochloric acid, which readily ionizes. And it's concentrated because there's lots of particles in solution. Here, strong because it's hydrochloric. Dilute because there's not many particles in solution. Now, the formation of charge does have implications when you're talking about things like carrying charge. Okay, A solution of ethanoic acid would not conduct electricity because there's so few charged species. Whereas a strong acid, such as hydrochloric, will readily carry electric charge and it will be a conductor of electricity because you've got so many charged species in solution. Guys, thanks very much for watching the video. A lot of information. I really hope you got something from it, and I look forward to seeing you in class.